<laughs> nice oh my God, beans. River Deck at Pier 17. Sometimes I forget that I'm at work. Uh, I'm here with Greeny, Jalen. My name is Michelle. Was that like your inner monologue? Yep, that just that kind was, of take over for a second. That there? was me forgetting. And uh, my bad. So, anyways, yeah, we got Joe. Joe Namath. Joe Namath is on the way. We got Joe Willie Namath. Yeah. The people in Joe Namath Jersey. People from Jersey is on. Uh, plus the Blazers, CJ McCollum will also be here at the Seaport. We'll talk a bunch of NBA, including, of course. Our top story, where the Cavs took care of business last night, hosting the Raptors, who, quite frankly, started vacation a couple days ago, if you ask me. First half, the support staff was legit. Kevin Love, who averaged barely 11 and a half points in the first round, turned things around in this round, 20 and a half, and was a vital piece of this sweep. This matchup works perfectly for Kevin Love. Valanchunas doesn't have the foot speed and the flexibility on the perimeter to stay with them. Serge Ibaka has been effective, and all of the other wing performers aren't big enough, so Kevin Love is having his way. Did you know that J.R. Smith last night reached 269 threes, which means he passed our friend Chauncey but for ninth Bills. in NBA playoffs history? So there you go, LeBron doing LeBron things. He was able to take it easy in the first quarter and then came through and made it just look simple. You know how I knew LeBron was a great leader, Green? <laughs> when it was a preseason game and he had a handshake for everybody on the team. Yeah. That's including commitment. guys that weren't on the roster the next I've day. heard him criticized for that. People criticize oh, LeBron James for, for the stupidest everything. thing. Cavs win big, 128-93. Let's hear from Mr. James. We've had four or five seasons wrapped in one. We've talked about it all year. We know what the narrative has been about our team, but... I can only speak in the moment, and to be able to put ourselves in a position where we can, um, you know, represent the Eastern Conference in the finals, um, that's all you can ask for. The hardest part is, you know, and you've seen it for years with Michael Jordan, you know, they happen to run into LeBron James, and um, they haven't lost to any other team in the last three years but, but us, and I think, you know, um, you know, we have a good team, and I think, you know, having LeBron, you know, to get through, you know, it's tough. At some point, that that's going to come down. That, that's going to change. You know, we've seen it all. We've seen it with Michael. We've seen it with Kobe. We've seen it a lot of great players. And uh, we want to be the one, the, the organization, Toronto organization wants to be the one who knocks that gate down for whatever reason. We got the unlucky draw every year of going against them. But, um, you know, it, it's going to come a time when that gauntlet is going to come down. And uh, why not us? Well, third time's a charm and you didn't do it. So <laughs> I mean, that, that's all I can tell you. Look, it was a week ago. It was the last series that went seven that we thought, oh man, this Cavs team might not have it. It's only LeBron. None of his supporting cast showed up. And yet here we are. They're all awake now. What happened to unlock that? Well, a couple of things. The Toronto Raptors didn't show the level of effort needed in order to make the Cleveland Cavaliers work like the Indiana Pacers did. People took for granted that the Pacers actually played hard. They actually were competitive. Victor Oladipo is a future star in the game. So now when you get to this series, this iteration of the Raptors have been together last, last handful of years. There's no way you should be getting swept in back-to-back -back seasons. Well, I don't care if Michael Jordan's playing for the Cleveland Cavaliers. You have to find a way to at least win one or two games to create something to build on. When you get swept the way they did, they're not the team of the future, Dwayne Casey. I know you have to get to the press conference and say, Hey, that, that gauntlet is going to come down of LeBron James. But when he goes down, if he goes down eventually, because it don't look like he's slowing down, that seems to be Boston in line. That seems to be Philly in line, not Toronto. Oh, you're 100% right. What it made me think of is there used to be a time in the NBA, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, where teams would knock on that door, knock on the door, and finally break it down. The Pistons finally got the Celtics. The Bulls finally got the Pistons. A little bit of the formation of super teams has ended that. But you're right. The, the team to knock off LeBron is not going to be the Raptors. We talked about it earlier this morning. I don't know what they can change, but they it. need to change. This group, as currently constituted, is not ever getting to the finals. This was the season. All season long, we talked about blood in the water. This Cavs team didn't have it. So much so that they basically traded one team for an entirely new team to try to figure things out in time for the playoffs. This was the year that an Eastern Conference team really had a shot to make something different. And here we are. Here we are, and we got a big number. The Cavs starters, other than LeBron, shot 71% from the floor. It's unbelievable. That's the highest mark by his teammates in any playoff game, which includes his time with the Heat. Now, he improved to 5-0 and in his career in series against one season in the East, which is winning 20 of 24 games in those. And now it takes us to get up and go. We'll get you caught up on everything else. Uh, let's, let's just concentrate on DeMar DeRozan. Again, was not on the floor in the fourth quarter this time. 
because he was ejected. He had a hard foul late in the third on Clarkson. They called it a flagrant two, which means automatic out. That's two games in a row, and they're out. He may have been just as happy to get off the floor at that <laughs> point, but that point. didn't look like a flagrant two to me. I did not think you throw a player out of a game for that play. Greeny, this is a game. classic example of if this was a competitive series, they would have caught out a flagrant one, continue to play basketball. Since this is a not fair fight, and almost like when in boxing, you just like stop the fight, we'd rather just send him to the locker room before this becomes an ugly So if this was 2-1? This is 2-1, flagrant one, go to the line, he keep playing back. You know what? And I, I can't believe I'm saying this, because I always say it should all be the same all the time. I actually agree with him I, doing I it that way. I don't hate it. As for the Celtics and Sixers, Brett Brown switched things up. T.J. McConnell in for Covington, and he made it work. 39 minutes, 19 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists. A lot of spark. Philly was plus 18 with him on the court. They're plus 38 with him on the court in the series. And they're also 8-0 when McConnell scores at least 15 points this season. Not many games we're going to talk about Philly where Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid aren't the leading You're scorers. Right. When that's Saric and TJ McConnell, that means they're doing something different. What is that? His ability to penetrate. Ben Simmons, because he's not much of a shooter, the offense looked a lot different. When McConnell out there, it functioned better. Does it work twice? Can he do it again? He can play because I like his game, but will they beat the Boston Celtics? No. Ah, Joel Embiid had a couple incidents last night. This one, we, we're deeming this the unfair fight with Terry <laughs> Rozier, who's about, what, 10 inches shorter than he is? He is they both got inches. both technical fouls after this one. It was in the second quarter. Let's hear from Joel on what exactly is going on here. Kept the ball away from me and uh, tried to punish me twice, but uh, too bad he's so sure that he couldn't get to my face. Uh, but uh, you know, I was and I, I didn't understand why it was a uh, double uh, double technical because I was just trying to get the ball and he was the one trying to swing. Greeny, he seems to be mocking the man's height here. What do you think about that? Well, considering the man he's mocking is two and a half inches taller than I am, <laughs> I take great umbrage to that concept. This is also a new thing in the NBA now. Not giving the ball to the guy, you try to take it, he's not... The, I don't remember this happening back when you were playing, because this would have led to a punch, an immediate punch an in the actual face. actual fight. Correct. And, and it's just one of those things where you're trying to get a competitive advantage. When your team has momentum, it happens a lot in reg ball. You try to take the ball from somebody, hurry up and get the ball in bounds before they can um, change the call in rec. That's normally where this takes place, so that's why you don't allow the guy to snatch the it ball. It was so early in the game, though, I thought, ooh, this could backfire for Joel L, because you never know. But Marcus Morris also had a couple moments to dance with Joel Embiid. And all he really did, I will say this, he remained silent, kept his hands up, and just gave him the 3-0 sign, Just very chill. One of the things that can get lost in this Philadelphia win is Morris play well. Yep. He actually outscored and beat and he made three threes. That's something that the Celtics are gonna be able to build on. I like this trash talk. Did you see his twin guys. brother in a Celtics jersey courtside? Absolutely. That is a good There's brother. a difference between playing for Philly, Joel, and being That's from legit. Philly, Morris. And check it out, Raptors. Somebody figured out how to get over the obstacle. Ooh. The name of Washington Capitals beating the Penguins 2-1 in overtime in game six last night. Yevgeny Kuznetsov was the uh, game winner. That means Washington, D.C. heads to their first championship round series in 20 years in any of the four major sports. Congratulations to them. It's been since the 98 NHL season that any of the D.C. teams made it to the finals. So the longest drought now of any city Talk to not me. to be the final, Cincinnati. Oh, welcome, oh, welcome, hey. Cincinnati. You're on the board. Nashville Predators kept keeping their season alive. They forced the game seven with Winnipeg off of Forsberg, who scored twice. He has scored. All, that's the name we've said most in these hockey playoffs. Uh, game seven will be Thursday in Nashville. And Vegas Golden Knights just sitting back, waiting to play the winner of Winnipeg, this Winnipeg, the smallest market in the NHL. What, what? That seems like a trivia question. What just happened? <laughs> I like it. I feel Much smarter now. Much smaller than Cincinnati, which has not been in the finals in a long time. <laughs> to baseball we go. George Springer had himself a really nice night in Oakland. Became the first Astros player to record six hits in a nine-inning game. He had four singles, a double, a homer, three RBI, and four runs, and his team won by 14. Which do you think happens more often, a six-hit game or a three-home run game? Which one do you think three happens Three-home run. By, by eight to one. It's Ooh. eight times more likely that a guy will have three home runs in a game than that a guy will have six okay. hits in a game. I remember that because we talked about that with Mookie Betts doing it already Mookie. more times than Babe Ruth. Back to the NBA, the Pistons and Stan Van Gundy parted ways yesterday. He had one year left on his five-year deal as Detroit's president of basketball operations and head coach. He failed to duplicate the success he had earlier in his career with both the Magic and Heat, making the playoffs only once 
in Detroit, and that was a sweep at the hands of the Cavs in 2016. Now, you guys cover the league for us day in and day out at ESPN. Were you guys surprised by this? Were you surprised to see Stan out? No, I don't think so. I think the, I think the writing was on the wall. I think a lot of people looked at that Blake Griffin move as, as sort of a desperation move that was not necessarily going to pan out, and it didn't because they came out hot. They won a couple games right out of the gate, and then... First and foremost, I love you, Stan. I'm grateful for all of the things that you did in the community that are way bigger than basketball, including your support of JRLA. Thank you very much. I'm not surprised that the dual responsibility yeah. coach didn't work because anytime you're the GM, usually your job is to forecast your roster now and project for the future. When you're the coach, your job is to win today's practice, win the first quarter, try to build on the success that we have with the guys that are in the locker room. That dual responsibility really hasn't worked for a lot of people that Can you give it one title? Sports. Can you say, hey, that's cool. What if I just stay as coach? Or what if I just, because that's the thing is like you have both titles and then just like that, both titles are gone. Well, we saw it with Doc Rivers. They yeah, took away one, one of his titles one. with the Clippers. But when that happens, it almost seems like it's, he, he inevitably is not going to be there much longer. I'm trying to think exactly. of examples in that sport of people who have both of those roles and it going really, really, really well. Uh, and right now one. I'm blanking. I'm sure that we'll come up with one in a Embo? minute. Oh, give me one. But I can't think of one right off the top of my head. Uh, meanwhile, right here on this great planet Earth of ours, Nike has filed to trademark the OBJ logo for Giants receiver, of course, Odell Beckham Jr. Now, he's got that Nike deal that he signed last year. It pays him nearly six mil a year. It's the largest shoe deal of any NFL player. Uh, what are we thinking about the can logo? I, can I teach people something about logos? Yeah. Sure. All right. This First and good. foremost, it can't always be a corny iteration of the person's initial. But it always is. Okay. Can we get a little more creativity? What did what what would you want there? Like his hair? Something that my, what is Michael Jordan's logo? Well, it's yeah, it's him. So oh, it, Odell should be a one-handed cat. You want Odell. So, something creative. A one-handed cat. Can I say, to I'm going to say this. I don't always hate the the initials. I just that was a little too like calligraphy 101. If someone had just shown that to you and not told you what there it was, you would you ever have guessed it was OBJ? Zero. No, Zero chance neither. I would have guessed. No, that's that. not necessarily a bad thing. I, listen, if he wants to coming back Re, um, you know, capturing his greatness, he's going to sell a whole lot of stuff. And he's going to be motivated because the NFL Network did a ranking of players and they had him at number 77 overall. Dang, that's, that ain't good. Uh, coming up, Nick Saban leads a college football dynasty that traces its origins back to Bear Bryant. Joe Willie Namath yes. stops by to compare those two legends next. And coming up next, Hall of Famer, he will be here, will join us in studio. His alma mater, Alabama, has produced eight pro football Hall of Famers. Only three schools have produced more. Can you name them? Oh, it's a good one. That, that is, is a good, a good one. one. Northwestern and who? <laughs> <laughs> Hall of Famers, then Alabama. At Bridgestone, our engineers want to help make sure